So Nintendo GameCube games have been going up in price recently and just within the past year, not just that, even the last couple months they've even been going higher and higher and I wanted to talk about that and it's not just GameCube games, Nintendo 3DS games and Wii games and all whole other games have been going up this whole past year as well. But I wanted to focus on this video in particularly on just the GameCube games for that. And if this is the first time on the channel, welcome! I'm Falcon Zero. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, throw the massive sword the notification bell and with that underway, let's talk about these Nintendo Nintendo GameCube games and why these prices are getting so high. So you know where I'm getting my information from. I'm going to be using price charting. I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can check out this website. All it does is it kind of gives you an estimate of what these games are going for. We're also going to be checking out eBay's sold listings for what these games are selling for online as well. But it's crazy to think about like Animal Crossing, F-Zero GX, Eternal Darkness. I wouldn't even actually hit over a hundred dollars there. Star Fox Adventures, Luigi's Mansion, Super Mario Sunshine. Why are these games going up so high and they're just they're going up kind of almost exponentially here. And it's kind of crazy to think about. Now, an interesting one I want to take a look at is Super Mario Sunshine here, as this game was actually getting pretty high on PriceCharting.com, but then all of a sudden when Super Mario 3D All-Stars came out, this game did actually go it had quite a bit of a little drop there. It is going back up a little bit right now, and that could be because Super Mario 3D All-Stars is no longer available. I'm actually kind of curious to see what will actually happen to this game, as this game was made readily available on the Switch all of a sudden, but then all of a sudden it was no longer there because they took it away from us. So this one's actually kind of interesting to see what will happen. I'm really curious to see what happens with Super Mario Sunshine. I think it'll go back up again, but I don't think it's going to go as high because I do think 3D All-Stars is that collection. That game actually might start going up instead of this one as then you can still play it on the Nintendo Switch technically. Another interesting, or a couple games to look at though, are Animal Crossing and Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. Now actually I don't have a copy of Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, but both of these games had releases come out in 2020 as a kind of like sequel per se of these games. And these games kind of peaked right before the games came out, but then they had a bit of a dip there. But you know, like right when the game came out, these ones were, I think, less valuable to the people. They weren't really selling because no one really wanted these games at that point because they wanted to play the newest version on the Switch. But again, they are starting to go back up too, which is, you know, it's strange to look at. And another thing to actually kind of look at here is if we look at some NES and Super NES games like The Adventures of Link, A Link to the Past, Star Fox, Donkey Kong Country, Super Metroid, a lot of these games here are sitting at like $20 to $30. My NES Super Metroid is a little bit higher now these days. but. They're sitting at a pretty reasonable price and the GameCube seems to be skyrocketing. Now, GameCube prices that I've been looking at are games that are complete in the box, which these NES and Super Nintendo games are not complete in the box. And that's a little bit of a harder, you know, at least these days to come by as if they were completing the box, their boxes were cardboard, most of those boxes weren't saved and they were kind of thrown away. So yes, if you look at those complete in the box prices for those games, those are going to be way higher. But if you just want to be playing these games and buying them, and I guess if you're looking at the GameCube too, if you just want the disc, although you might as well get the box because most people had the box with it. It's crazy on how much higher that the GameCube prices are getting though than these NES and SNES games and I didn't include any N64 in the little thing but the N64 games too though and they're, and they're not as old. But hitting back on the NES and SNES games and why I brought them up in particular and not the N64 before though of why I think these games are not skyrocketing out of control like the GameCube games is we have a pretty vast library of the NES and SNES games readily available for us right on the Nintendo Switch online service. There are 70 games I believe for the NES and around 40 I think for the SNES. I think it's, it's just over 100 games altogether though between the NES and SNES collection for just subscribing to the Nintendo Switch online service and then us getting those games I really feel like brings the prices down though too because it's very easy to play those games and for the GameCube we don't really have an easy way to play a lot of these games on the Nintendo GameCube unless you go out and buy a GameCube physically and go out and buy these games individually. And there are exceptions to that rule though with like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. These games have both been ported to the Wii U and they actually they, Twilight Princess got ported to the Wii. Twilight Princess makes it onto every Nintendo console I'm waiting for that Switch port to come but that's a different subject. But 
there are a handful of games that you can play easy, but most of the GameCube games are actually kind of hard to play on uh, current consoles, unless you go buy a retro gaming console, which the GameCube is kind of going up to, and it's got a fantastic library, which is I also think making it really, these prices are going up because of that. If Nintendo, I think, actually put these games on the eShop, or if they somehow did include these on their online service, I don't actually see that happening anytime soon right now, though. But, you know, they could maybe be doing something where they put these on the Nintendo eShop as kind of digital games where you can buy each one individually. If they did that, I think you would actually start seeing these GameCube games start coming down again because they'd make it more easily for these people to actually go and play these games. Because it's just not collectors who just want to get these Nintendo GameCube games. Some people just want to play and experience them, and that's getting harder to do these days. Now, as for the question, do you think, or do I think you should actually be collecting for the Nintendo GameCube right now? That's actually a pretty tough question right now as, you know, I think these games will actually go down in the short term here. Like, I don't think they're gonna go down drastically, but I do think these games will eventually start, they're gonna peak and they're gonna eventually go down. Now, over the next 20, 10 to 20 years though, I do think these games are gonna keep going up and up and up and they're gonna keep getting harder to find and they are gonna be more valuable to collectors here. But I think eventually these games will peak and especially if Nintendo did something where they re-released some of these games I do think that these prices would drop a little bit it's not like they're gonna be going down like 30 or 40 dollars but I think they'd be more manageable to, or manageable to buy and you know boost up your GameCube collection I would hold off right now if you're gonna start deep diving into a GameCube collection but that doesn't mean that you just shouldn't start collecting if this is something that you're passionate about either and another reason why I think some of these listings have been going up over the recent years though too, or just kind of the recent just year, the whole pandemic thing I think made it a little bit harder because everyone was staying inside and then they were probably going to eBay buying these games. But when someone on eBay sells a game for like $50 or so and then they see that sold listing on there as the seller, they kind of look at the game and they'll be like, well, let me see if I can sell it for 55 or let me see if I can sell it for 60 and then someone sells it for 60 or they even sell it for 70 and then all of a sudden they're making the prices of the games go up higher because people are actually buying for it and they keep going up a little bit each time, which makes these games on eBay eBay just kind of sell for a little bit more money each time and makes it just overall the price increases. I also do think though we are about to hit a wall of this and I do think these GameCube prices are going to be coming down a little bit in the near future here. Now I can't predict the future this is just my opinion but I'd also love to know what you guys think though. What do you guys think with this crazy GameCube prices going up right now and just video games in general? Have you guys been collecting right now or have you guys been holding off because you're kind of you know the prices are just getting too high? Leave them in the comments below. If you like this video please smash that like button as it really does help out. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date with more videos like this and as always every one of YouTube show me your moves